Hi everyone, and welcome to class. Today I want to talk about flute repair. Flute rep flutes are kind of finicky, where if one thing doesn't work, nothing wants to work. And so often what happens is the flute's been working great for weeks and then it's the night of the concert and all of a sudden something doesn't work. So I want to go over a couple of the reasons why, what's going on. Now, a lot of this stuff is also found on our emergency repair guide, which is free. Anybody can just come on over and get the emergency repair guide. There's several uh, articles off over here, but for instance, it doesn't play. Today we're going to talk about springs, what could happen there, and then we're going to go look at, is it a bent key, is it an adjustment screw, um, or is there a bridge key adjustment out? So we're going to go look at all of those options, and like I said, the emergency repair guide is free, so if you haven't got it, go to repairmasterclass.com, scroll on down to emergency repair guide, and get it, it's free. Uh, it's in a course that is online. That way if you, if I, when I, not if, but when I start adding more to it, um, you get all the free content and all the new videos and all the pictures and all the better explanations and all that sort of stuff that's out there. So go to repairmasterclass.com and get that. All right, let's go take a look at some flutes. What I wanna talk about is springs. And in the overall flute body, we've got springs here, here, and here that end up causing us problems. So normally what happens is the flute player is trying to get their flute to be as pretty as they are on the night of the concert. So they're in here polishing the thing up and taking fingerprints off of it. And unbeknownst to them, they end up coming in and hitting one of these springs. And if you look in underneath here, there's this little tiny spring that is easy to come flicking off. And when that happens, when, you, when we push one trochee, they're both there. But look, this guy here, will stay open wherever he wants because its spring is no longer on. So if you've got a spring hook, great, use it. If not, take a mechanical pencil, get rid of all the lead, and you can use that as well to just push that spring back on there, just like that. And now all of a sudden, both of these springs, get this to where you can see it, now all of a sudden these keys work the way you want to. Now think, keep in mind, what would happen if that tro key, clear at the top of the flute, wasn't sealing, it wasn't closing up? Would you be able to play anything below it? No, not at all. So nothing on the flute would play if it's a tro key. So you're gonna get that flute player that comes up to you freaking out, oh my goodness, my flute doesn't play. Throw that spring back on there, more than likely it's it. Let me show you the two other places that the springs can be loose. So, Here's one, and sometimes we'll have one or two springs here. This one only has one spring here. The other place is right here. This um, key uh, will also get the spring off to where it doesn't come open. So when I'm playing everything closed, no big deal. So when I'm playing here, I've got all my fingers down on the instruments, no big deal, but as soon as I go over the break, this guy here is not open. It's actually closed it's actually held shut. So unless we've come in here and put the spring back on, now all of a sudden it'll pop back up and your flute will start to play again. Now if your flute does not have two springs here, the other spring will be clear down the other end of this trill mechanism, not on the, the rod where the right hand stack is, but back in here behind. So it'll be right back over here. And the same thing, you can take this spring on and off in order to make that flute actually work. So the number one reason why flutes suddenly stop playing is because somebody was trying to polish it and they inadvertently knocked a spring off. It's no big deal, throw it back on there um, and your flute will work great. The other thing that happens is we've probably bumped something. So if it was working before and suddenly it's not, either when I was polishing it or when I was putting it together or when you know, junior high kids or junior high kids got a little excited and bumped into each other, probably moved something. So if we bump something, what we want to do is we want to put that key back. And I'm going to cover how to do that in a different video. But right now I want to talk about a couple of the other things that may have, uh, that may be going on. So some of the adjustments in the flute may have also been knocked out when we're polishing it. When we're polishing our flute, this bridge key mechanism back over here. So these guys, there it is. These guys right here that are moving, these two feet, we've got this one here, and that one sitting on top. Those are the two that end up getting a lot of the attention. So what ends up happening is this key here 
will get bent, this foot usually. When I'm looking at these two, I never worry about trying to fix or repair this bottom one. From an emergency standpoint, all I need to worry about is this top one here. What I can do is I can grab just a flat nose pair of pliers that has no teeth in it, so no standard pliers, but a flat nose set of pliers. I can come in here and grab a hold of this foot, I can come in here and grab a hold of this foot, and twist it left or right, up or down, and change the adjustment between these keys. Now the way I check that is with my feeler gauge. So I'm going to come in with my feeler gauge and, and check for that tension and make sure that they're balanced. So I can feel the tension there and I can feel the tension there. All right, what I don't feel on this one is tension here. So that's not in the bridge foot, that's actually in screws. That's the other thing that will cause problems for you is over time screws will move. And we've got two different types of screws. The first kind is these screws that are in the posts, right? So these big gnarly guys in here. On flutes, we also have adjustment screws. And oftentimes those are up underneath the keys, clear up in these small little crevices. Or sometimes if you're lucky, there are nice big ones right over here on top. This flute has all of them hidden in slightly different places. So these guys are in underneath. So right now, as I use my feeler gauge, I can feel that this key is hitting and this one is not. I don't feel any pressure there at all. So I need this key to come down sooner so it's touching at the same time as this. So right in underneath these keys is a small screw. And I'm simply going to come in and give this guy, watch my fingers. See how big of a turn that was? That was not very big at all. I'm going to give that guy just a little bit of a twist. And I'm going to come back with my feeler cage. And sure enough, I've got pressure on both. And I want equal pressure on both. I'm going to go just a hair more because this one's just a bit lighter. So I've got that screw on there. And again, watch my fingers. I'm going to go from here to here. That's up. These are not massive adjustments. There we go. Now I can check the same balance all the way down the trill, all the way down the right hand stack. So I can check, if I can get my feeler gauge in there, check from here to here as well. And there's a lot of play here. See how this one touches? And now look at how much movement there is in this key. There's a lot there. So we can do the same thing. Come back in underneath here. I'm going to make a significant change on there. Oh, I'm nowhere near. So you can see how small, tiny adjustments can make big differences in the way these flutes play. And that's what I want there. I'm going to check the same adjustment. So you've got these three keys here. We'll work with this one. You've got adjustments between these two keys. These two, almost always, there's no adjustment screw. There should be, but there's not. It's almost always bending uh, the key arms to get those to work together. And then from here to here is back in the foot. You guys, springs and adjustment screws are almost always your problem. I want to show you the other problem that ends up happening with adjustment screws or with the other type of screws. We just did the adjustment screws between keys. So I want to show you the other type of screw. Those, the rods that run through the post oftentimes are pointed and will be an adjustment screw, not for this key here that rides across that rod, but over here through this post. Oftentimes if I come in here and tighten this screw down all the way, this key will stop moving. So if this guy is really, really tight, just come in here and watch my fingers again. We're going to take just this little tiny bump. You see this from here to here. That much of a, of a movement is plenty to get this key to free up and start moving again. 
You guys, those are the real quick, simple adjustments on a flute that every flute player and especially every director should know how to do on the flute. So if you want, go to repairmasterclass.com, get the emergency repair guide. I go over all of these, complete with pictures and explanations, step by step with every key name. It's all out there for you uh, to take a look at. Plus there's hundreds of other tips on the emergency repair guide for every instrument, band and orchestral. So go over and, and check, get yourself a copy of that. Now, if you're not here with me live right now, here in just a second, we're gonna go over to the live Zoom and start answering the questions that people have asked. If you're not here for that, you should be. I'd love to have you come over and ask questions. What I do every week is do a live tech tip on band or orchestra, and on the fifth Tuesday of the month, we do a, a guitar one. So we're always talking about how you can repair your own instruments. Go to repairmasterclass.com, scroll down the homepage, find the join me now, uh, join me every Tuesday button, and sign up to get this link so you're here asking questions, and we can go through the issues that you've got in front of you right now. So for everybody on YouTube, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. For everybody on Zoom, We'll be right there with you uh, and answer all your questions. See you next time.